as laptops got smaller, it became a thing for them to have externally connected floppy drives because there just wasn't room to have that kind of a device integrated into the laptop. But did you know there were external floppy drives for desktops as well? Even five and a quarter inch ones. And I mean for PCs, because of course things like the Apple II and the TRS-80 had external drives like this. These devices are kind of weird because they were sold as a kit that required you to have a card inside the computer that adapted your internal floppy drive connection to be external. Now this unusual interface has some consequences because unlike a normal external floppy drive that just takes a regular floppy ribbon and provides power, this connector ends up being somewhat proprietary. To use drives like these, all I have to do is plug them into a floppy controller like the quad flop here, and I'm ready to go. But I don't have the adapter board for this thing, so I don't really have an easy way of using it. Now the drive inside is a typical PC drive with nothing special going on. So if I open it up, I could absolutely just remove the drive and put it in something else to use it. And the drive in this unit is a pretty handy TIAC FD55 GFR, which is good for reading 1.2 meg and 360k discs. But it feels like kind of a waste to leave this perfectly good external enclosure here. And if they can make an adapter to go to standard floppy drive interfaces, why can't I? Now, since we can map out the pins from the back of the drive to the cable, we can know exactly how this is wired and we could make a passive adapter to go through the computer to connect one of these internally. But there's a much better use case now. And that is for one of these. This is a grease weasel, which allows you to adapt a floppy drive to USB for flux imaging for reading and writing extremely high quality disc images. So, I made an adapter for that. And today, we're gonna put it together and try it out, and I will be releasing the design files for this because this particular drive's interface is apparently so common that several of my viewers live on Twitch when I designed this also had drives compatible with this. So hopefully, I can release this design and allow people who have external five and a quarter inch drives like this one to use them with grease weasels for really easy and convenient floppy imaging. Okay, let's get these PCBs open and go over what all is here and what you need. So, on one side, there is the footprint for a D-sub connector to plug in the cable, and on the other side is a connector for a right angle interface to plug into the grease weasel. Over here is a connector footprint for an amp maiden lock connector to provide power to this. So to put one of these together, you really only need four things. The D-sub connector, the power input connector, a power supply for it, and a right angle header to plug it in. Now this really is a simple adapter and board. I just wanted to get this video made so that people know about this so they can make these if they have a drive like that because it is going to be pretty handy. I've actually already made one of these and given it as a gift for someone, but their floppy drive used a different interface. So I'm also releasing that one just in case someone has that. But as far as I'm aware, this 25 pin version is actually much more common. So this would be the one that I would recommend you look at first. The GitHub repo for this project will have all of the design files available, as well as a bomb with some links to where you can get some of these. I actually bought the connectors off of Amazon because they're pretty common kinds and you don't need to make a special parts order. So it's really easy to put one of these together. The header that plugs into the grease weasel is the one thing that isn't just quite right because it has uh, six too many pins on it because it's a lot more common to get 40 pin headers like this as opposed to 34 pin ones like that. Probably because of IDE and Raspberry Pis. But you can just cut the six extra pins off of a connector like this, which I will be doing today. Now I'll mention here before I start getting these soldered on, the part orientations are to have the two power connector and data connector for the grease weasel on this side. And then the D sub connector actually goes on kind of the bottom here. And that's just because the way that the data lines were routed to the D sub connector, it's flipped. 
uh, all of these would have had to cross over if uh, I was going to do it the other way, which would have been possible, but uh, I didn't have time to route it any other way when I was working on this. So I'm going to leave that off for now, flip this over, and get everything soldered on here, although I think I'm actually going to take that off too because it's a little taller. Just with that, I can get the header soldered on first. All right, now I'm gonna mount the amp maiden lock connector here for the final time. And I actually went with one of the higher end ones from TE that has the metal band surrounding it uh, that gives it much greater mechanical strength uh, when you have the cable plugged in because we're gonna have that big thick cable sticking off on the side. There we are. Now, just to uh, demonstrate that, uh, I'm gonna really quick get my power supply out of here. Now, this is just a standard power supply that you could power a hard drive or something with uh, to use with an IDE adapter, but we're gonna have it be plugged into here to use with our uh, floppy drive, and it is very, very tight, so it's a good thing it's secure, but yeah, that, that connector is a much better kind to use for this, so that should work out pretty well. All right, this is a very simple board, and the only thing that's left now is the D-sub connector, which also has some pretty good solder lugs for strength. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this attached now. And that is all there is to it. So to use this, I'm just going to plug it straight into the grease weasel there. And then on the other side, I can plug in the cable for the floppy drive. Then I'll plug in power. And then with power connected, that should be usable. All right, now with that all assembled, I'm gonna go ahead and plug the grease weasel into my laptop here so we can test it out. Now I like to work on Linux, and to use the Grease Weasel, I usually like to use the program Flux Engine GUI. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that right here. But we need to test it. So here's the first thing we're gonna do. We're gonna take a 360K, five and a quarter inch disc, pop it in here, and we're gonna read it. So uh, I've already picked a drive one, which is how this drive is identified on the cable. Uh, that is a 360K IBM formatted disc. Uh, there are plenty of options to choose from. And uh, we can go ahead and read the disc. And we can see that is absolutely working. There we go, modern laptop reading from uh, ancient five and a quarter inch floppy drive. And I can take all of this and just tuck it right back there. And that is all I need to have out and uh, accessible. Pretty convenient. One of my main reasons for making that adapter was so I could take this drive home and image any new software that I buy before it ends up making it to the office. And that way it gives me even more chances to be able to make archives. Now this disc in particular is nothing to write home about uh, and I'm not even sure it has a valid file system on it. So let's try something a little more interesting. DOS 3.2 here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the disks for this out, or at least the first disk here. That is DOS 3.2. We're gonna pop this in here. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually going to try and browse files because I suspect, and I'm right, we can actually see the files that are on that disk thanks to Flux Engine. So there we are browsing the contents of the disk. And this software will even allow you to uh, extract the files by saving them or with more, we can add new files. And I've actually used this to build up disks uh, to put files onto old computers. It's really handy to be able to do that through the Grease Weasel rather than having to make a disk image or anything weird like that. You can just send files straight to the disk. Now though, what I want to do is I do want to read this disk again. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. There we are. And I'm going to save the decoded image here for this test. We can save the raw flux data. I'll just demonstrate that really quick here. 
so we can save it as flux. And for right now, I want to save this as a .img file. Now I'm gonna take this file and I'm gonna put it right here. And I should be able to boot DOS 3.2 with a virtual machine here. So this is 86 box and uh, this I have already configured to emulate an 8088 IBM PC. So what we're gonna do is go to the media, the five and a quarter inch floppy drive, and we're going to add an existing image and we're going to select DOS 3.2 and now we're gonna reboot the machine. It should boot from that if uh, I've set this up correctly. Configure it should do large for memory. Uh, let me fix that. And after changing it over to a 32K system, there we are, run a ver DOS 3.2. We just took our real IBM DOS 3.2 disc, imaged it and booted it in a virtual machine. That is really handy to be able to do that in such a clean package. This is just archiving, but it's really nice to be able to do that with something so simple and easy to use. And I can now just take this home and wire it into a computer there and not have to worry about it. Well, there you have it, the Grease Weasel external floppy adapter board. Again, these design files are all open source for both versions of that. You can find them linked on GitHub in the description down below. And I hope that is helpful for anyone who may have or try to get a drive like that because it's pretty clean and easy to use package. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick look at my solution for using that drive. If you did, you may want to subscribe to the channel to be notified when I release future videos. And if you want to help support the channel, you can find me on Patreon. But for now, that's it, and I will see you next time.